Welcome, Governors. Hey, this is Adashi here, and this is part four in my series on troop type. And in this video, we're going to talk about cavalry. Specifically, we're going to talk about why you might want to play cavalry, or maybe you won't want to play cavalry. And just like in the infantry video, we're going to start this off by talking about talents. The reason we do that is because Lilith created these talents in an image that they wanted cavalry to be. So it's a good way to get insight into what Lilith was trying to do. So there's really five talents in here that I think is quite unique that's worth mentioning. The first one is going to be Equestrian Excellence, Charge, Emblazon Shield, Disarm, and Rallying Cry. For the first two, Equestrian Excellence and Charge, it's really all about mobility. Maybe in specific use cases, but it's really all about mobility on the battlefield, moving faster. The next one, Emblazon Shield, is actually skill damage reduction of up to 12%. That's actually really, really good. Uh, Disarm actually debuffs the target, 20% uh, attack for two seconds. That's a nice skill to have. And then Rallying Cry increases the damage for the first 10 seconds of combat, really allowing you to front load that damage in the fight. So if we were to take a stock at this, and what do we see from these talents? We see lots of mobility, skill damage reduction, debuffs, and then front loading of damage in kind of that what I would expect hit and run type style. Okay, now let's look at the commanders and see if that actually works out. So the first uh, cavalry commander that we need to look at is going to be double C or Tau Tau. And the first skill he has is Dragon Rider, in which it does a big damage factor, but then it also has attack reduction, which was a common theme I think we'll see in that debuffing type realm, and march speed reduction, which is a little bit of stickiness, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, it'll be curious to see whether that kind of sticks around as we go through this process. Now, the second skill that's really worth mentioning is he is a peacekeeping commander. And in the early game, this makes him extremely powerful since much of the fighting and the most of the challenges you're going to have in the early game is going to be against barbarians in that PvE type environment. And I just want to mention that, that Tao Tao is really, really good at this. He's really good at leading rallies on forts. Now, the third skill you're going to have is increased attack and march speed, more mobility, a little bit of sustain, rage restore. We'll see if that's a theme that sticks around. And more stats. Now let's take a, a look at Money Moto here. So he does direct damage factor, uh, more march speed, more attack. Kind of goes right into that mobility. Once again, he's a peacekeeping commander. So he's really good at leading rallies against forts and, of course, fighting barbarians in the open field. But his fourth skill is where he gets really interesting. It debuffs the target so that normal attacks, uh, when you attack a target, that target has a chance to take more damage for the next three seconds, up to 30% damage. It's a debuff on the target, so everyone hitting that target now is going to do more damage. It's worth mentioning. Now, his expertise is just more skill damage. All right, so let's look at the second generation of cavalry commanders and kind of see if these themes continue. So first we'll take a look at Saladin. Uh, hit skill damage, big skill damage, uh, march speed reduction, so we get a little of that stickiness, and then this healing effect reduction. I'm not sure I'd classify that as a debuff, uh, but it's really an interesting skill to have. He has lots of stats, a little bit of march speed, not a ton, but 5% into that mobility category. Here is another theme that we've seen pop back up, right? Skill damage reduction. Pretty nice to have. And that goes all the way up to 30%. Very impressive. Combine that 30% with the 12% you can get in the tree. You're now talking at, what, 42% damage reduction from skills. That's substantial. And, of course, his fourth skill is for hitting cities, which is also worth mentioning that he is a conquering commander. So once again, now you're not leading rallies on forts, but you are leading rallies on cities. And then his expertise kind of doubles down on what he's already doing. Okay. Now let's look at, look at Khan. 
uh, what Khan does is damage, uh, more damage, or I guess rage reduction, uh, which can lead to more damage. Uh, more damage, more damage, and of course a chance to do more damage. Now what makes Khan really nice is he is just a glass cannon, uh, probably the highest damage dealer in the game. I don't think I'm going on a limb to say that. He can pump out ridiculous amounts of damage, which also makes him very good for PvE situations uh, because a lot of those are timed events in which you need to kill things very, very quickly or the fight starts to go badly. Just a, a, worth mentioning that once again, cavalry are really, really good in PvE situations because of this. So if we take stock of where we're at right now, we see that there's a lot of mobility. Every commander has had mobility to this point. There is debuffs in Minamoto and Tao Tao. We don't see a lot in Saladin and Khan, so we'll see if that continues. But what we do now see is more anti-skill damage coming through from Saladin. Now, we don't see any of the front-loading damage, so I don't know if that's going to stick around or not. We'll take a look at the next commander pair and, and see. And, of course, this is going to be uh, Tela Takeda, uh, which is widely known as the most broken champions ever created. But let's actually take a look at their skills and see what they're doing. So... King of the Huns is definitely a unique ability because we're not in that skill damage realm. Every commander to this point we've seen that's a cavalry does extra skill damage. Attila does not. He does normal and counterattack damage, but he also does have a debuff, and it's a potent debuff. It's a 50% attack reduction that's really, really impactful, uh, which gives him some nice defensive capabilities. Now, his second skill is another debuff. So you have the, the damage bonus, which is nice when you're attacking strongholds and cities. But really, it's this defense reduction of 25%. That can last three seconds. That's really substantial, and it allows when he's boosting his own damage and lowering the defense of the target, now you can really rack up some kills in a very, very short period of time. Let's take a look at the third skill. And once again, we see this skill damage taken reduction. It goes right into that anti-skill damage that we've seen now through a couple commanders in the cavalry uh, realm. And of course, more attack and some nice movement speed to fill in with kind of that mobility. His fourth skill is just straight damage. It boosts his own damage. Once again, kind of goes into that mold, boost your own damage, debuff the target, um, and then just really unlock that, that potential. And his expertise, the silence effect is kind of nice. There's uh, some garrisons that silence out there. Um, but 20% increase when targets are low in health. Really worth noting, because now you're doing extra damage when they get lower in health. And when you leave combat, you get that big movement speed bonus, um, which is once again more into that mobility. You can get in and out of combat very, very easily with these cavalry commanders. And let's take a look at Takeda. Takeda is going to debuff the target, so this applies, and now there's a chance to do extra damage when you're attack attacking them, which is worth noting, you're not boosting your own damage, you're debuffing the target, so the target takes more damage. So if that target is getting hit by five or six different commanders, you can really rack up a lot of damage on that single target in a very short period of time. Uh, the next one, more march speed, more attack, obviously great to have. Uh, more defense, a little sustain, okay. You don't see a lot of defense on cavalry commanders, so this is really nice to have. And once again, now you're reducing skill damage, not by much, 5% is pretty modest, but now actually you have a normal and counterattack damage reduction possibility too. Hey, never turn down uh, damage reduction. And his uh, expertise, once again, doubles down on that debuffing the target. So now when you have your active at play, that target is going to take increased damage from normal attacks of everyone that's attacking that target, not just Takeda. All right, so if we take stock of where we're at now, I think we still have that mobility. We still have massive debuffs. I think they've really doubled down on the debuffing in these commanders. We have anti-skill damage in both of these commanders, but we've lost that front-loaded damage, and we don't really see any of that stickiness anymore. 
But now we do introduce a new concept that we see, and that's damage amplification of yourself, right? To Takeda and Attila are really doing that. You're kind of boosting your own damage uh, potential. And we'll see if that kind of carries forward. Into the final two commanders now, it's going to be Chandra and William. So Chandra is a really interesting commander. Um, how they play together is a little confusing, and we're not going to get into the weeds of that. But basically, he boosts his own damage, and then he creates a stack, which can be used to do direct damage. All right, so the next one, uh, skill damage reduction. You get more stacks of blessing, which then convert into damage. Uh, but his third skill is really where I think we've seen this common thread again. You apply stacks of exhaust to the target, which is 5% reduction to health and defense stacks three times. So you're talking about 15% health and 15% defense reduction. That's basically permanently on the target when you're attacking them. This is really, really devastating for that target, especially if you have multiple targets attacking them. You're going to rack up kills in a very, very short period of time, and that target is screwed, right? So his fourth skill, this is kind of where I was talking about. It turns into that direct damage factor on the blessings. So he's got a little bit of burst there. He's got a little bit of skill damage. Nice to have. And once again, uh, you get this March speed bonus, which is quite substantial, 25%. That's, that's big. And his fourth, and I want to just mention this because I don't know if this is going to be a theme moving forward or if it's just going to be introduced for this set of commanders. But when he's outside of Alliance territory, he gains additional effects. He effectively stacks up those blessings faster, which means he can do more burst damage when those activate into direct damage factor. All right, kind of cool. I don't know if that'll be a theme or not, but nice. Now, William, a lot of people are really excited about William. He does some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, he does a little bit of AoE. His AoE is kind of a weird shaped, but it, it, it's still very effective. Uh, one thing to note about this and I don't know how impactful it is, but he prevents extra skill damage from buffs from a taken effect when he uses this. So it is kind of fits into that mold of anti-skill damage. It just goes about it in a very different way. And it also can act as a uh, group buff in a sense, because you can prevent that target from doing AOE damage to your allies in the area. All right, the next one is more mobility, um, bonus damage. All very nice. But once again, I'll note, when outside of Alliance territory, this is where you get that damage increase. So once again, we've seen that theme with two commanders now. Maybe that carries on, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But I just want to mention it. Uh, third skill, we're going to look at the expertise because it just kind of builds on this. And this is also very interesting. And I think this is where it all comes together of what Lilith is trying to do in the open field with cavalry. And that is... If targets are surrounded, they're going to take a big burst of damage from William. So not only are they going to be debuffed, not only is Minamoto going to increase the damage they take, not only is Takeda going to increase the normal damage they take, not only is uh, Chandra going to lower their health and defense so they take more damage, but now William is actually just going to apply burst if they're surrounded. And I think this is very telling for what Lilith wants to do. But let's finish talking about William, and then we'll kind of hit on that. And that's his fourth skill, uh, which is kind of unique in that it's a group buff. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a theme. I kind of highly doubt it. But it is nice to have a little bit of support kind of baked in when you have that kind of mob mentality. A little bit extra, extra juice is always nice. So if we were to kind of sum this up and talk about what cavalry are trying to do, kind of from the beginning, right, we said that there's High mobility, you have this stickiness factor, you've got some debuffs, anti-skill damage, and then front-loading damage in. Now, what I didn't see continue on as this evolution went was that stickiness and that front-loaded damage. So we're going to kind of remove those. But you do see a ton of mobility. If you want to just fly around the field, if you want to move in and out of combat kind of at will, cavalry are really, really good at that. If you want to rally things that are 30 minutes away, cavalry are really good at that, uh, and they can just move so fast. Now, the debuffs is something I think is extraordinarily interesting about cavalry, that to be honest, 
I don't see in other games necessarily with this archetype or this mold, but I think Lilith has done a really good job with it. And that is this single target debuff that really amplifies what you can do to that target, which works both well in rally situations, which we should note, conquering, let's go up, conquering, we'll go up, conquering. So what does cavalry like to do? Rally. They're really, really good at it. I think the meta is always going to be rallying. And I think they do that primarily in the later stages through that debuffing. You debuff that single target so you can kind of really shut them down in those one-on-one -on -one scenarios. You can isolate those targets and then you can just straight up beat them. And in this instance, what I'm talking about is the rally versus the flag or versus the garrison. And those debuffs stacking up, really devastating, especially with Attila Takeda, especially with Chandra. Okay, but a little bit of side note, let's get back to the debuffing and the mob mentality, which I think is what you're intended to do in the open field. You identify a high value target, you move in very, very quickly, you eliminate that high value target, and then you get away. And then you move on to the next target, you kind of reset, right? And I think this works really, really well in that you can find those buffers, you can find those Jones, those Mulans, you can find those YSGs, eliminate them, and then back out. And why I think this also is you get this anti-skill damage, right? So how does that play together? Well, what is the danger when you kind of get into that big group? You get three targets that all try to burn down that high priority target. Well, you group yourself up and you make yourself vulnerable to tons and tons of AOE. Well, having that skill damage reduction allows you a lot of defense for what people are going to try to counter that with. So burn the target down, avoid a lot of the big AOE skill damage, and then get away. So I think those go together really well in kind of that mentality. So if that's what you want to do, if you want to just kind of sit on the sides, pick your target, burn that target, peace out, cavalry are really, really good at that. So if you want a a uh, champion or a, a commander that's very, very fast, that's the tip of the spear leading the rallies, that can isolate and remove high-value targets from the battlefield in very, very you know, precise type or precision type attacks, cavalry are really good. Now, if you want something that is a little bit more flexible, something that can really work in multiple situations, more defensive, more sustained, uh, you really want to fill those gar garrisons and kind of be that bastion up on the wall, cavalry isn't going to be for you. If you want to kind of do that big AOE in those team fights where you're spreading that damage out, getting lots and lots of kills from all of those targets that are most likely lagged out, uh, cavalry is probably not going to be for you. Um, so I, I hope this was quite helpful. Um, I hope that gave you kind of some insight or at, at least kind of the ramblings inside my own head, uh, whether that's good or bad. But if you like this video, please uh, like, um, share it with your alliance mates. Um, and if you are looking forward to the next video in the series on archers, uh, please subscribe to the channel so that way you'll be notified when it comes out. Thanks again for watching and, and listening to this video, and you guys have a good night.